Well, hey guys, welcome back to Willow Ridge Acres. Another puppy live stream coming to you live right now. Uh, today, we're, we're going to talk to you about how to care for newborn Great Pyrenees puppies. And there's a lot that goes into it. Um, as you're joining us, drop in the comments where you're watching from. We'd love to see uh, where everybody's joining us from and you know, give you a shout out as you're watching. And yeah, we've got one of the puppies right here. This is one of May's puppies uh, from her litter. <laughs> well, as people are joining, we'll uh, kind of zoom around to the different uh, litter box or litter boxes, whelping <laughs> boxes. That's actually interesting. Yeah, you have a litter of puppies. You have a litter of puppies, but it's not called a litter box. That's what cats use. Anyway. Here's Mabel's puppies and Melissa and our other kids are in there. Uh, it's bottle feeding time right now. So we're still supplementing, uh, not as often with uh, the puppies right now, but uh, they're still getting, about how often are they They're getting? Mabel's are three times a day. Mabel, yeah, Mabel's puppies are getting bottle fed three times a day at this point. Uh, so Melissa's in there doing bottle feeding time and they're all growing, you can see uh, they're all pretty much learning how to walk mm -hmm. and they're starting to open their eyes and starting to hear bark. and bark. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sure you can hear that as well. Uh, here's these puppies. Yeah. They're just crashed out and all the mamas are outside, uh, stretching their legs, using the bathroom. We'll let them back in, in just a little bit here. Uh, here's May's puppies. They're crashed out as well. <laughs> super cute look at that one in the back with this like legs <laughs> leg just spread back that's awesome i love that i love that let's see we've got we've got lori from sunset heritage farm tuning in how's it going lori thanks for tuning in tonight nicole's tuning in she said uh she's doing the dishes in her kitchen in shirts that's awesome that's awesome thanks for joining us and then sarah she said they're so precious i want to meet all of them that's awesome. They're, oh, just wait until they're like fully. In about two weeks. Yeah, in like two weeks, they're going to be like, I, I'm, I guarantee you on one of these uh, live streams in like two weeks, I'm going to like lay down in one of the whelping boxes and just like have all of them like crawl all over me. It'll be, it'll be awesome. They'll probably try to bite me though because they're also teething. So they're trying to like bite and gnaw on anything that they can right now. Oh, Lenny's tuning in. Lenny said, uh, when will they be up and about so cute <clears throat> so the two litters are yeah two of the litters are they're they're up and uh if you're asking if they're like when will they start walking mabel's and um and millie or no mabel and may's puppies are up and walking millie's hasn't quite caught up yet but hers are also like five days younger than the other one so uh, they'll start walking pretty soon. If you're asking when will they be up and about because they're like crashed out to sleep, probably as soon as we let the mamas back in and they can smell the mamas, they'll get up and they'll want to start nursing again. So, so yeah. Hey, as you're tuning in again, drop in the comments where you're watching from. We love to give shout outs. Um, and also, uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Uh, but today, one of the things that we wanted to talk about, kind of the subject of today's live stream is how to care for great Pyrenees puppies. One of the things that kind of dawned on us as we're doing all of this is that, you know, from the outside looking in, it can, it can kind of come across as like, Oh, this is easy. Like it's easy to, to have puppies and to, to care for them. There's not a whole lot of work, but that's not the case. Can you tell them? Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> Try to set you up there. Um, yeah. It's a lot of work from, I guess before, they actually even have the puppies for us specifically having three females and then they happen to all go into heat within a week of each other that was pretty stressful but making sure that they had their like alone time with mac and <laughs> the hormones were just like crazy so that was like a whole element like all in itself like on the breeding side of it yeah, yeah our yards basically three portions you know cutting the thirds not literal thirds but three sections so we were utilizing all three sections moving dogs making sure everything's going the way it's going 
we're supposed to go and like document that. So then we have a rough idea. Mac, Mac, our sire had to have his time in the fantasy suite. Is that what it's called? Yeah. On, yeah. on the bachelorette yeah. with each or lady. the bachelor. Yeah. He had to have his time in, in the fantasy suite with each of his ladies, yeah. you know? So and then <laughs> I, I think one time we put everybody, we we're like, we're done. Everybody's done. Put them all back together. But they had all been separate for about three weeks just in their own areas and we put them all together and it was just stupid. We shouldn't have done that like all at one time and it caused chaos and there was a girl fight and it was crazy, but um, a little squabble. It was all right. We, we broke, broke it, up. it up and it was fine, but it was our own stupid, like we shouldn't have done that. Um, so then we knew when they all made it, we had at least one documented, at least one mating on everyone. Yes. We actually like put it on our calendar. Like we know, <laughs> we actually like documented it on our calendar when each of them mated. Yeah. So, um, so then we could, you know, have a better idea of when we could expect puppies because, yeah. uh, tell them like how long it usually yeah, so takes. It's Fifty-eight to sixty-five days is technically the you know amount of time, but it's because they have an LH surge sixty-three days exactly from or before they're born. So anyway um yeah so we have to keep like a a range of when they could possibly go into labor so then we have to put that on the calendar too that way we can prepare for it yes so then we have to start preparing for it but we actually two of the girls started showing signs like right away the only one we weren't sure of was may because it was her first litter but because we know what we're doing we've done it before we knew she you know, was pregnant. Dogs can have false pregnancies. I mean, it's so complicated. When we first, when Mabel was pregnant, we took her and she got an ultrasound and then the count of puppies was off. And um, yeah, so we just relied on our own, our own knowledge at that point to well, prepare. There's also a way uh, to, to kind of tell and, um, I don't know to to know like when they're about to go into labor. Tell them how. Tell them the the. Oh well, I'll get to that. Now. Okay, gotcha. Don't spoil it. Well, we'll get to it. <laughs> um. Yeah. So then we start like preparing. We had one whelping box, and then like we use a tarp on the floor. We knew it was going to be warm. So we wanted to use the garage again instead of setting it up outside and then ending up moving them in. And then we had so many puppies, almost all of Millie's puppies were indoor dogs. And so I didn't want to have them outside and start that out with them outside and then have to move them inside. So I felt like the garage was a better option. Um, so yeah, we put together the one whelping box and then we had always used old blankets for the dogs to give birth on and after doing that for what two three litters i just didn't want to do that again because it's just some things you just can't come back from <laughs> <laughs> um and we use our own washer and dryer to wash everything so we invested in actual whelping pads which is what you see in there and we have six of them so we change those every day, um, but we had to start buying those. And then because we're trying, you know, I don't want to spend money on something I don't have to. Amazon would only let me order one with the coupon. So then I had to like ask a friend to order one and then I had to order one a couple of days later. So anyway, that went into preparing and then making sure we had bottles, um, all the birthing supplies, which we can post like a list of what we keep on hand, but for sure gloves and you know, so. Yeah, I can put, uh, like, after the video, I'll put down in the description of the video um, kind of a list of, like, the, the different, mm -hmm. you know, supplies that we get for to be prepared. So we had to set everything up, then go through what we had, get what we needed to replace. Um, so then, and then repeat that two other times as well. Um, and then one of them, Mabel, no. Somebody caught us off guard and we had to put together the little pig rail, the, the yes. little white railing that keeps the mamas from squishing the dogs on the side. Yeah. Yeah. If you've As never they seen. they were giving birth. It was. Mad. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, if you look in the, like the whelping boxes, you know, on the like the camera views, like like I'll show you on on May's puppies. So that like PVC pipe that you see around the edge, uh, you don't have to use PVC, but um, that's what's called a pig rail. Some people make it out of wood. Um, it's just I found it's cost effective to use PVC pipe. You yeah, just get it from store, yeah, and how we store it, I can take it apart and you know store it pretty easily. Um, but what the purpose of that is, you know, that stands off of the wall, you know, about an inch or so. And that makes it to where when mama goes in there to nurse and she lays down, a lot of times mama wants to put her back like up against the wall and kind of almost like push off the wall a little bit. Well, uh, if she's not careful, she'll do that and like squish one of the puppies up against the wall. And honestly, like, now at this point when the puppies are like two you know two and a half weeks old they're strong enough now to like you know yelp and and cry and also like kind of move out of the way um but you know the, those first couple days those first few days if mama does that and squishes one of them up against the wall like she can she can definitely kill one of them do, mm -hmm. doing that so it's just a way to you know protect the puppies so yeah and our mamas have been pretty good um we've honestly struggled the most with mabel right now she does not want to be a mother but if <laughs> if they she's don't our care unfit mother no about she's great their puppy screaming they won't get up because they just are tuning it out and they just don't care and that's how a puppy dies you know against the the edge that's right um, that's right so yeah so one week before the very first uh, ex day they could go into labor. So that's like around day 51. We start taking their temperature two times a day. How do you do that? Do you do it with like the, yeah. the, the forehead no. scanner thing? So we have to do that rectally. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot of alcohol wipes and cleaning and all that fun stuff. We, have, we bought one separately for the dogs. We don't use the same one <laughs> for... <laughs> Yeah. But you have to you have to take their temperature. Yeah. So we're looking for a drop. A normal temperature for them is, you know, 102 ish, 101. Yeah, normal so, temperature for a dog is actually high yeah, compared to a human. human. So it's gonna drop down to like 98.5, 98.7, and then like hang out there a couple of times. And Mabel did this to us. We thought it was Mabel's time. She had 98.5 for like half the day. I'm like, it's a go. Nope. Yeah, because basically their, their temperature is going to drop down for like, so like once their temperature drops down like that and it stays down for a little bit, like it's within 20, it's almost like they're water breaking, right? Like kind of like. Yeah, except, yeah. It's, but like, that's how you can tell, like at that point, you know that at some point within the next 24 hours, they're going to start, yeah. start pushing out puppies. So with Mabel, that must have happened overnight. Um, and it they say within it's usually five ish to 24 hours mabel was running on the five hour schedule so she had her drop and had her puppies and that was that yep may on the other hand had a temperature drop and melissa and i were out here in the garage for 23 hours waiting for her and i think we told this story no about my sister being here just my yeah we talked about like, it last week I want to see a puppy born and her school got out and I'm like, everything lined up so perfectly. And they were here for like five hours. And then literally as they were leaving the neighborhood, May just like stood up and started pushing puppies and out. pushed a puppy out. <laughs> uh, they were like two minutes down the road, but they already had to go and, and be yeah. home. So, so that's a whole nother phase that kind of starts. Once you know, it's going to happen. They usually stop eating and just some different things that, you know, I guess humans probably do too. They don't feel too great. They can vomit. They have diarrhea, all that fun stuff. So then, you know, it's getting close. So then they start having the puppies. And for us, well, this breed specifically, they do very well um, delivering their puppies, but we do have to keep watching um, things that we have to look for make sure a placenta comes out with each puppy. You know, the mom knows that to break the bag and, eat the placenta and all that stuff that's not fun um yeah there's a few facts about dog birth and also even like afterward that you may not understand you may not know ahead of time and it's kind of gross but yeah the the mom eats like the placenta of each one and then afterward like if you you look on like the puppy pads that we have in each one 
Uh, some of them are a little bit dirty. We're actually going to change those out like during the live stream to show you like that's part of, you know, daily um, responsibilities, caring for newborn puppies. But one of the things you'll notice is at, while there are some like little brown little, you know, marks from them, from the puppies pooping, there's not actually poop there. And the reason for that is the mamas actually like eat the puppies poop. And it's kind of gross to watch, but it's it's actually like, it's an instinct thing and it's like that's what they're supposed to do and yeah yeah and the puppies can't pee or poop without being stimulated for a, like a the first like week or so yeah so it all kind of goes together um yes so as the dog's giving birth for us because we uh he's like barking because we didn't do x-rays or an ultrasound because we've done that before and it didn't it wasn't even accurate yeah mabel's first litter we actually did like an ultrasound <laughs> it's funny to say that but like we did and we posted it online and we have five kids and yeah. everyone was like oh my gosh and i'm like no that's a dog like, yeah we posted it online and people thought that like she was pregnant again but yeah, <laughs> we're no. like no that's not uh -uh. yeah anyway uh, but yeah the the dog sonograms aren't really i mean they, they can sh they'll show but like what they well, they, then you just they, know they have a pregnancy. They have a pregnancy, but they it doesn't show like they can't show with that much detail, like so you know exactly how many puppies right. to expect. And you can even get an X-ray and try to count, you know, spines and that sort of thing. But the way they lay in there, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, there is a good question. What if they don't eat the? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Lenny, yes, go ahead. What if they don't eat the umbilical cord? Um, that ever happened we actually yeah. have you know clamps and sterilized scissors so that we could cut that if we need to we've literally never had to do that i think one of millie's puppies i thought i was gonna have to but i didn't um if they don't eat the placenta that's fine as long as the umbilical cord you know they separate the placenta from the puppy if not we would you know clamp it and cut it um if they didn't eat it, we would just throw it away. I mean, <laughs> it's not like they have to eat it. It just is part of, I guess, it, their... And it, I think it helps, like, give them, like, nu nutrients and stuff, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Funny story, but not funny. That actually constipated Mabel this time <laughs> because she had 11 puppies. So during her ER visit, they took an x-ray to make sure she didn't have a retained puppy which is a whole nother side of having puppies that people, there are complications that can happen with dogs. It's not all the time specifically with this breed, but it can happen. And because she wasn't doing well, we had to take her in. We got an x-ray. Um, but they came back and told me she's so constipated. I was like, she ate 11 placentas. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, real quick. Mary Jo said, Hi, I love your puppies and moms and dads from South Dakota. That's awesome. They would love our winters. I'm sure. Yeah, they definitely would. We're I jealous. See their coats just be all fluffy, and it's literally so hot here most of the time. We, I mean, there's things that we love. You know, we're we're down here in Texas, and there's things that we love about Texas. But uh, we're both from like I'm. I, I grew up in the Midwest, up in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. She grew up. She was kind of like a military brat, but mostly over on the East Coast, up north on the East Coast. So um, just by fate, we both ended up down here in uh, in Texas and we met in high school. Um, but yeah, honestly, like what's keeping us here in Texas at this point is um, family. We have family uh, here in, in Texas. If it wasn't for that, we would probably move up north somewhere where mm -hmm. it isn't so brutally hot all the time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, nurse, nurse Jen is watching. Yes. Hi, nurse Jen. Come here, Jackson. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? hi? Here's Jackson. <clears throat> so yeah, Miss Jennifer. Can say hi? <laughs> oh, Mabel oh, came Mabel in too. Here. Hey, Mabel. Let's see. Let's see, if oh, you can see. Mabel. Mabel just came in from outside. Not your puppy. Yeah, that one's not yours. <laughs> all right, so. Okay, so we left off at delivering all the puppies. Um, so we keep an eye on them. 
all the mamas are coming back in from being outside so we give our dogs calcium a special calcium for while they're giving birth um to kind of help replenish them and it helps like keep their contractions going and all that kind of stuff so we're having to measure that out and make sure we give that appropriately um yeah so then as the puppies are born i guess we'll go over that we weigh each we let mom clean each puppy up um, and then we weigh them mabel's going right in front of the camera again and she we, loves you we keep records we have a little record book um, yes of their weight gender we keep track of their dew claws because some people have questions about that and that way we can easily like know um what they have or don't have <laughs> oh mabel <laughs> she's such a character right now hey by the way if you're tuning in i wanted to, to mention we do have like some of the puppies are available um they're not available to go home just yet they won't be available to go home until like what mid, like end of july or de depending on if they're going to be inside dogs or if they're going to be uh livestock guardians if they're going to be like a family dog they can go home at eight weeks which would be around the end of july um if they're going to be a livestock guardian we keep them uh to 12 weeks at least and that would be the end of august um if you're interested in a puppy uh you know we we'd like to talk with you we we vet everybody that you know is interested in one we want to make sure that you can provide a good home to our puppies uh but if you're interested go to our website willowridgeacres.com you'll find a button uh right up there on the top for reserve a puppy and there's just a form that you've got to fill out um and then i'll be in contact with you I'll, I'll give you a call or shoot you a text and uh you know we set up a time to talk and you know just kind of go over what the expectations are and you know we we require a deposit of half up front to um you know to secure the puppy and uh if you want more details it's it's all right there you know on the website so uh willowridgeacres.com or i think i've got it in the video description if you want to click down there right now it, some people, uh, Miss Jennifer is saying hi to Jackson. Lenny said hi. Let's see. Consuelo said, I love your videos. Can you find good homes for them in Texas? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Um, there's actually, sorry, all the puppies are barking like crazy because they're excited because uh, m the mamas are back in the boxes with them. But uh, yeah, um, the Great Pyrenees is actually, a, a, you know, pretty popular breed here in like the like the hill country is what we call it uh where we live in texas um although it, it is a little difficult to find purebred great pyrenees like what what we're breeding a lot of them have uh like a mix of what's pretty common is like a great pyrenees and anatolian shepherd uh, those are pretty common mix but we were very you know specific in in getting purebred uh for our breeding program so um but yeah even though it does get hot here um they do they do they they do well in the in the heat I, I would say i'm sure they would do even better in a colder climate um but you know they shed out a lot of their undercoat here in the summer and we just make sure to provide them plenty of water uh, and uh, a lot of shade as well so during the day uh when they're out there working with our our livestock they're like cooling off in the shade during the day and they're We've uh, actually had fans over there before in their dog houses or in the general area and they will they don't, not lay by them no i mean honestly like they want to be they they don't even get in the dog house unless it's like pouring down rain mm -hmm. uh they want to be out in the field like with mm -hmm. with their you know with their livestock so um i, I think i said on the, the video last week but i'm like i'm honestly like jealous like when i walk outside and see how they how they sleep at night or like Clearly they don't they're kind of just like laying out there waiting you know to if they hear something they get up and bark at it but like they literally every night like lay out in the field underneath the stars and like you know we're out here in the country so I mean, like you can sleep outside if you want. <laughs> no I my, I my back would be so sore <laughs> but i mean you know we have like just thousands of stars up in the sky at night out here and uh they just get like to lay out underneath the stars every night it's pretty cool you can make it happen jane said i'm interested in a puppy awesome. jane yeah go go check out the the link on our website fill out that form and uh we'll contact you and we'll follow up and you know kind of um uh, you know go from there and, and tell you kind of what the the process is we do have a uh like a contract that we have people sign um 
you know, to get a puppy is just, uh, again, to make sure that the puppies go to good homes. Nicole is actually watching. She has a deposit down on two of the puppies mm -hmm. that you're watching right now. Uh, so she's super excited. She said, I'm so happy they're up and moving now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eating. Yeah. So like, Mabel. Mabel is like, I'm not going to nurse right now. Yeah. But May, we she's. Just bottle yeah, that's true. Mabel's puppy is just bottle fed. But look, look at May's puppies. Like, they're cute. Like, yeah. Um, how much was it? Four and a half pounds. We weighed everyone yesterday. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, and one of uh, May's puppies weighs four and a half pounds. So, for perspective, that's bigger than our blue healer was when we got her. She was three pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Our blue healer, when we got her as a puppy at eight weeks old, she was smaller and lighter than May's puppies right now at two weeks old or two and a half weeks, somewhere, somewhere around there, right? Yeah. Hey, Jackson, monkey's watching and she says hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Owen's here too. You just can only see his arm. Oh, yes. Let's pan over. So that's Owen and Melissa. Cameron is actually inside, but he's sick. Um, he got sick at summer camp, so he is um in his room resting <laughs> i think lane's doing the dishes yeah lane's inside of doing the dishes oh let's see we got another question here nicole said out of curiosity have y'all had i guess any issues with their skin our pyrenees didn't until we moved to texas he was born and in, in uh new mexico and we uh we lived in the desert his whole life i would say environment could be the water uh, or yeah. the food yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you change uh your great pyrenees's food at all when you moved or yeah it, it could have been a few different things but no we haven't we haven't had any any skin issues with ours um we <laughs> like hold on look at millie's puppy look at that one nursing like upside down and it's like kicking <laughs> i love it <laughs> yeah um so anyway, where were we on um, caring for the puppies? Um, so it's it's definitely a lot of work. Like weighing it's, them, yeah. Yeah, weighing so them. So then immediately we start watching, making sure they're nursing. Um, we weigh them twice a day for about a week. Supplement anyone. This time was super super stressful um, because of the situation with Mabel. Um, what do you she mean? She had mastitis before oh, she yes. gave birth, and then she was just fighting this fever, and so her puppies weren't nursing well, so we were having to nurse them, and then one of them passed away, and it was just yeah, yeah. Everything you, all at once was extremely stressful, like really stressful. Yeah, if you didn't catch it on last week's live stream, uh, one of Mabel had eleven puppies, but one of them uh, didn't make it. It was born uh, very weak. Uh, right away, we, you know, uh, Michelle, you know, we were all out here. We, we noticed that uh, its coloring was off. It was very blue. It was breathing, but it was like very, you know, its, it's breathing was very weak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, labored breathing. And, uh, you know, we tried everything we could to, uh, you know, give it a fighting chance. And we did. It, it survived overnight, uh, but it never like fought to, to nurse and, I mean, as you can see, like again, look at look at May's puppies. Like, I mean, they're 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 getting in there and they're fighting for uh, you know some of mommy's milk there. <laughs> I do have to say that some of hers have teeth. <laughs> yes. Oh, and they're like their their nails are pretty. Yeah, I mean, our sharp. arms and stuff are just like out scratched of control, up. Like, but yeah, you know, uh, one of our friends said, uh, put it best. Said that you know when it comes you know to animals like this when when they're born like only the strongest mm -hmm. survive so oh uh, the vet yeah when our, it was our vet that said that only the strongest survive so uh you know i guess you know technically we had 26 puppies and 20 we had 25 of them healthy and alive so um you know our our heart is we don't want to we don't want to lose any of them uh and we we did everything we could to to save that one but it, it just you know it it, it it was born weak like that. So uh, we did everything we could. Uh, Mary is tuning in and she said, could they live in Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they definitely can. Um, again, I, I would say, you know, in the, the hotter climates, uh, just like, you know, here in, 
in South Texas. I, I would say that the probably the um, advantage you have there in Florida is that at least you get some rain and things That's aren't true. like just dry and desolate like it is here right now. Uh, but yeah, it, it, they, they can do great in Florida, um, you know, especially if it's like an inside outside dog. Um, but if it's you know, like ours, they are uh, purely outside dogs. Like they are working dogs. They, they guard our livestock. Uh, this is like the longest they stay inside. The mamas is when they're whelping their puppies and they're still, they're not like in our house or in our garage. We've got an air conditioner going in here, but it's really, you know, so it doesn't get like blazing hot in here. Um, but other than that, you know, they live out outside and, uh, you know, again, as long as you provide them plenty of shade and, uh, plenty of clean water. And that is the tricky part is right now with it being this hot, they love to get in their water bowl. So like in, in the water trough. So like if you just bring out, if they're an outside dog and you just bring out like a little bowl, they're going to like dump it over because they just want to get the water on themselves. And then that's not going to be good for them because now they dumped out their water and now they don't have anything to drink. So you really have to make sure they have a big enough trough that they can't possibly tip it over. But that at that point, now they can get in it. Right. So um, when they get in it, they get the dirt, the water dirty and like, you know, algae and stuff can grow in it. And it, when it's hot outside, that grows faster. So right now, literally every day, uh, we're going out there once a day and we're dumping the trough out and filling it back up. So um, it is it's a lot of work, but you know that's how they do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Mary said uh, they would be inside and going out for potty. Oh, oh right. yeah, they would do they do fine. I would just say um, invest in a really good vacuum and for inside your house a grooming, uh, and some good grooming. brushes. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got links down in our description, even for that stuff The uh, like grooming brushes that we use that we find uh, very that work great at like raking out their undercoat and uh, a, a good robot vacuum is like key because you want that thing running like at least once a day. Uh, we've got a link in the description for like the one that we use as well. I think la Millie's last litter, one of them was in inside slash outside. All the rest were out or inside puppies. It's just how it worked out. And some friends of ours actually got two <laughs> and they have two inside and they do fine. Um, they do get them groomed, and I'm so jealous because they're, like, gorgeous. But they yes. live in Louisiana, so it's hot and humid. And they look like show dogs yeah. all the time. They're, like, super clean. Uh, but, you know, ours, they, they get they get dirty because they're out, they're out, you know, and they're working dogs. But the crazy thing, another cool thing about this breed is they have what's called, like, a self-cleaning coat. So uh, when it rains and they get, like, super muddy, um, you look out, and they're, they just look, like, completely caked with mud. But literally, like a day later, as long as it's dry out, um, that all that mud is really just like caked on their 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 top coat, the top layer of their coat, which is like a lot thicker and more coarse, um, and that literally just like rubs off of their mm -hmm. coat, and it's crazy. Like two days later, you look out mm -hmm. and it looks like they were never muddy, yeah. and you didn't we didn't even have to like Nelly wash. Nelly is them. notorious for that. She is a mud puddle like I swear she, she loves rolls the mud. around. <laughs> and we'll go out and she is covered head to toe. And then yes. the next day, if it's dry, she's fine. Um, Mary asks, do we brush backwards? We brush every direction we can. <laughs> um, it's pretty crazy. When we've, we've even blow dried the dogs when we wash them. All the mamas get like a pre-birth bath. So they're at least clean nobody wants to um sounds like somebody's coughing yeah <laughs> uh, nobody wants to give birth totally dirty and muddy so yes uh, we give them a, a bath and then we blow dry them and we haven't purchased a really good animal, coat blower coat blower we yeah. have one linked but I yeah just we want to get one of those i'm not gonna spend the money on it but i need to um yes so we blow dried and we brushed every direction in our entire garage. Jeff came outside and he was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, sorry. Yeah. There, I mean, there's even like hair yeah. like out here right now. Like, oh. Just on the floor of the garage right now, just from them shedding. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Hey, real quick. Um, if you're watching and you've not yet subscribed, 
We're up to 3,030 subscribers now. If you've not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're, we're putting out one live stream per week per week now, every Tuesday at 7.30 uh, Central Time. And uh, we're going to have some more Great Pyrenees content coming very soon. Just, you know, just normal YouTube videos again. So uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you've not yet done that. Uh, Wings as Eagles Ministries commented and said, wonderful breed. We own two. One is 13 and the other is three. That's awesome. Uh, I've seen you. I think we've commented on each other's videos a few times. So it's good to see you on the live stream. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, 13, that's awesome. That's, yeah. Uh, I know that the breed doesn't tend to live super long. She's about to like start crying if she thinks about it too much. So I'll just stop. Because <laughs> when we first got our, our first Great Pyrenees, when we got uh, Mac and Mabel, she Googled like what the life expectancy is and right away started crying because she couldn't believe that, you know, just the larger breeds don't live, don't tend to live that long. But let's see. Marsha has a couple questions. She said, good evening from Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Marsha. Two questions. Are the puppies always kept separate from the other litters? And also, do you know which mama goes to what litter? Yes. So as soon as the puppies are born, they're you know, weighed, we put a collar on them. And then specifically this time, because we had three litters, we wrote the mom's name on the collar and then the puppies are also numbered. So like we have like so many yeah. safety nets of making sure that we know which puppy is which. And it's important because we track their weight really so closely, especially the first week. And then really up until they're about four weeks and we transition them to uh, kibble we'll track their weight really closely. So yep. Yeah. So each we won't puppy. keep them to get like, they won't play with other litters until they've received their first round of vaccines. And even then I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. Um, we just keep everyone separate because heaven forbid, if Millie's puppies picked something up, I wouldn't want the, it to get passed on. I mean, I don't know what they would pick up, but I wouldn't want it to get passed on to the other puppies right. and the other litters. Yep. Yeah, so they're in their own separate whelping boxes, and we know uh, which mama goes to which. Um, yeah, they're all here in our garage, um, but the kids, I don't know if I can show you. Hold on. I, I think I can. The kids, I, I'm going to grab one of the cameras. The kids actually made, like, little signs for the whelping box. So this is May's, you know, sign. And Mabel's actually, it fell off or it got wet or something, so they have to redo Mabel's. But Mabel said Queen Mabel because <laughs> that's what we call her and then this one's millie's and she, her nickname is millie moo so that's millie <laughs> yeah so the mamas too they know i mean they smell and they know their puppies i don't know if you saw if you were on a few minutes ago when mabel came in she was smelling the puppy i was holding which was not her puppy and she knew right away which is why i kind of pulled the puppy away. I don't know that she would do anything. I, I'm not sure, but I don't want to find out. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, and then we, I mean, we also like to keep them, you know, we, we want to know which puppy is which and, um, you know, keep track of that just so that again, with, you know, with this many litters, um, we want to be able to tell, you know, when people put a deposit down on a puppy and once it comes time for selections, we want to be able to tell them who, you know, which, was the mama dog for that puppy just so that you know it's always good to know mm -hmm. so uh let's see uh mary asked what food will you feed them always and feed all of our dogs victor um it is for puppies and adults um, none of our dogs have ever had any kind of diarrhea vomiting any of that their coats are all considering where we live gorgeous like they yeah, haven't blown their coats yet the mamas but when they do it's going to come back within i mean a couple of months and just be yeah really healthy and shiny and all that yeah we feed a a, a dog food brand called victor and uh specifically we feed the high pro plus so it's like a high protein but it's also a, a high fat and um it's like formulated 
uh, for like working dogs and for nursing mothers as well. So it's, and it works, uh, it's, it's great for puppies as well. So for us, it was like, it checked like all three boxes of like the stages. Purina Pro Plan for a while, and it was a great dog food. But then once we started having puppies, trying to keep the puppy food separate from the adult food, and it was just a whole thing. Yep, yep. So I, I think we've got a link for that down in our description too for Victor, uh, their Victor High Pro Plus. Yeah, it's a it's a Texas if, brand. If we could, they would sponsor us or what like something affiliate. Us, yeah, and they said no, and I'm like, I'm, we're buying so much of your food. I think they're still there. I mean, it's not like a national brand. I'm not sure. It's a Texas brand, but you can buy it on Amazon. So I guess you can buy it anywhere, uh, as long as you buy it through Amazon. You may not be able to find it like in stores, other places, but um, so anyway, yeah, Victor, uh, dog food. If you're watching, we buy so much of your dog food. We love it. But if you could hook us up with a sponsorship, that'd be awesome. Just a hat would be great. <laughs> yeah, uh, with with six great Pyrenees, and especially now with the puppies, uh, we're, we're actually buying uh, six 40-pound bags of dog food every three weeks right now, and it's probably going to be oh, yeah, more often. Are yeah, um, uh, we're actually about to be like needing. I, I'll probably have to go tomorrow to buy more. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you're wondering oh is there must be a lot of money in in you know puppies and having puppies no because there's also a lot of expense yeah. <laughs> but we're not doing this you know as a as a cash grab as a money grab we're doing it because we we generally love this breed so right. oh this is awesome marcia sent us a super sticker Aww. that's awesome thank you so much marcia that's that's uh very kind of you we appreciate the love and support love that let's see got another question here Michelle said, hi, I love your YouTube channel. Thank you. She said, uh, I'm super excited to be getting a Pyrenees this year and your channel has been very helpful. How long does delivery usually take? You mean actual delivery of the puppy? I mean, like a minute, like. Yeah, do you mean like delivery, like while when the mama's given birth? Or let us know in the comments. Yeah. Like, what do you mean by delivery? Do you mean like delivering like delivering your puppy like to you or like the mama delivering the puppy let us know and we'll be able to answer that question better consuela asks or Quince, consuelo sorry asks, uh do you by default supplement with formula so we actually use goat's milk um and we there's some right here we buy powdered goat's milk is just easier so it's based it's we it's treated as formula but we use goat's milk it's super gentle on their stomachs um and we're only supplementing if we were strictly bottle feeding we would be using a puppy replacement but all of our moms are feeding the puppies so we're just giving them some extra calories and that sort of thing um so do not only feed your puppy goat's milk <laughs> all right michelle said ah, for all okay. the puppies from start to That's finish a good question a lot better than I'm not all there today. Um, <laughs> I'm like one minute. So the actual delivery depends on the amount of puppies. And then. It's yeah, se yeah May, it seems like between puppies. May had her puppies all within like three hours. It was pretty quick. Mabel's. I mean, we don't really know because we weren't there. Isn't it like, uh, it, it like you don't want between puppies. You, it, it shouldn't no be more than two hours. It shouldn't be. Yeah. And it should be less than that. If you were, if you knew there were more in there, which, um, during the labor, you could actually feel their belly gently. I wouldn't do it hard. Um, and you can feel that there's more puppies in there. Cause I did that with Millie and I was, I was like, there's for sure at least one more in there. Cause we weren't sure. Um, but once they reach that two hour mark and then w the calcium supplement, it comes back well we're fine is somebody using the microwave <laughs> we're finding that our microwaves like really mess with our wi-fi here so um hopefully nobody's using it right now bear with us i think it's coming back on but yeah keep going all right 
What was I saying? Yeah, so for ours, some of them came in like groups, like um, they would have a puppy and then within like 10 minutes have another puppy. But then generally speaking, it's about an hour apart. Um, who was crying? Yes, this is one of them that was crying. No, she's not crying. She just wanted to be held. Just like a baby. Mm -hmm. After they've opened their eyes and then this litter, May's litter, um, their ears, I don't know if you could hold it up to the camera. Their little ear holes when they're born are like closed and they're starting to open. So if we like clap or something, they like turn and they can hear. So as they all start fussing, they wake each other up. So that's fun. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work for sure, um, having the puppies, especially if you want to do it responsibly. I mean, I guess you could, you know, like people, you know, they say like puppy mills or backyard breeders. Um, I guess you could have a, a litter and just, you know, let them fend for themselves. But that's definitely not the, the type of people we are or our heart for animals and our heart for dogs. Um, so, you know, when we, when we have puppies, it, this is like, we go into like shift into a whole nother gear and it's like a whole family. Oh, are you growling at me? Are you growling at me? It, it's like a whole family effort. Uh, <laughs> she's growling at me to, to care for the dogs. And, um, yeah, there, we pretty much have somebody out here in the garage with them 24 hours a day. So, um, you know, they're never just out here alone and, uh, just constantly, uh, cleaning and, caring for the mamas and and the puppies yeah. weighing feeding changing out i'm doing an extra three loads of laundry a day <laughs> to uh keep all the stuff clean because i don't i don't want them rolling around in their own filth and to me that's just asking for germs but. yep yep so i see a question on there yeah that one what kind of gruel do you start them on they're going to move under Victor, which is the same that Mama, and then we will soak that down really good with, with some goat goat's milk. milk. Yeah, we'll actually soak it, uh, let it let it get all you know soft and you know being soaked in the goat milk, and uh, we'll just put it in there in like one of our uh, troughs. Yeah, we use like a pig trough. Yeah, they're like little pig pans, like pig pig feeding pans. That's what, honestly what we use for our dog bowls for we'll feed them during, all of them. Uh, so they'll go on puppy food, not by next week's, but the week after that. They're, um, they're starting to cut their teeth, so and they're not all the way in yet, but they're starting to cut They'll them. just all circle around the bowl and climb in the bowl and like it's oh, yeah. chaos. But I we'll think show that on one of the live streams, their I'm sure. Size, they really transition over to dry food like pretty quickly. They do. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, it gets to the point where. This girl, she's got some teeth. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> Mary said, you're doing a great job. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's a lot of work. Uh, Melissa, our daughter is, you know, she's, she's an aspiring vet. She wants to be uh, a vet when she's older. So uh, she loves it. She eats it up. And uh, she's the one that, you know, stays out here the majority of the time. In fact, she's, she's walking back in right now. <laughs> we all have to tell everyone. Deborah said, "Be still, my heart. They are they are real beauties. Yeah, they they really are." Yes. The beginning <laughs> shark attack time. Yes. <laughs> it's like we were complaining about the scratches on our hands and legs and stuff, and now they're moving into biting. <laughs> yes. So Melissa, when you're out here at night, do they bark like this all night? Yes, they no? do. They do too. But she's sleep. She's a sound sleeper. So. Yeah, she is. <laughs> All right, let's let's like zoom in on a few of the boxes. So here, yes. like Millie's, Millie's puppies, they they all just nurse, so they're all, you know, wiped out again, milk coma, going back to sleep. Mabel's got some of the most rambunctious. That one right there, Mabel's puppy down in the bottom, one. pink. That pink, pink girl, light pink. Uh, God bless whoever home she goes to. She's gonna be high energy. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> we're gonna pair her on a farm yes she, she yeah needs she to be working all yeah day. she's gonna need to be like a working dog for sure 
and then maze puppies again. I have one of them. Yes. Hmm. Let's see. Deborah asked, how many girls and how many boys? Uh, I never wasn't it like, was. it was 12 and 13. It was like 12 boys, 13 girls. It was girls. pretty even. It was just barely more girls. It was about to be even more. The, the one that didn't make it was also a girl too. So, but it ended up being, yeah, go get the pink girl. She's messing up nap time. Oh, this one's pink too. Like oh. pink. Must be the... Twinkies. Like she's she's kind of wild. She's kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, what? What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hi, 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 hi. What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> so many had asked us about a pure white dog. She will be pure. Yes. I mean, you can just tell by looking just how white she really is. Yeah. Yep. Marsha said, I would get so attached that I would cry mm -hmm. when they go to their forever homes. Melissa still, when they, when people come and pick them up, Melissa still will, you know, have a tear. Uh, our first litter uh, that Mabel had, it was a little more difficult, but some of it was our own doing. Um, we made the mistake of giving the puppies names ourselves <laughs> and uh, we named them and actually. They were COVID puppy, like the first round. True. So we didn't, want people to come out to the house because co so we actually held on to them for yeah we held on to them longer weeks or something crazy yeah but but we gave them names we we love to show the office um who doesn't right so um we actually named all the puppies after characters from the office and what we found the hard way is that when you when we name them ourselves uh there's something about that like when you gave a dog and even though you know when they went to their new homes that you know most of them give did they all give them new names i think they oh, did yeah yeah so um you know they got a new name afterward but it was still we were attached to them because we had given them a name uh so now we we learned the hard way and uh, we don't give them names anymore you know they're really like a color or a collar color so she's light pink well we um, call them by their names that the owners tell us yes yeah, so and so we do that like not our dog anymore yes we do that so um once once we do selections which happens around like six to seven weeks old um, you know, people that have put deposits down on the puppies, we'll do the selection at like six to seven weeks. People that live close by, they can come to the farm and they get to pick them out in person. Uh, people that, you know, live a little bit further away, we do like Zoom calls or FaceTime calls and uh, we'll give them our opinion on, you know, kind of their temperaments. Like she's a little more, a little more feisty. She probably needs to be, um, you know, outside. An, an outside dog. Uh, she's going to, and, and and as they get older too, we can start we start noticing which ones have a little bit stronger um, like guardian instincts as well. But then uh, once they've been selected by you know their future forever home, um, we ask them, hey, do you have a name picked out? And uh, if they do, we start calling the puppy by their new name. So, and again, like at that point, we're calling it by a name, but it's not a name that we gave to them. It's the name that their new owner gave to them. So. Uh, it, it helps with that not getting attached because it's like we already know like, hey, this is somebody else's puppy. We're, we just get to care for it for a few more weeks and then it goes home to their new owner. And we just remind ourselves that like we love oh. puppy day when we get a puppy. So we just have to keep reminding ourselves that we do this so that somebody else can have that like I got a puppy day. Yes. Yes. But if you get a puppy, just know that your puppy's breeder is slowly dying on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> they put so much work into them. Yes. Ricardo said, what a beautiful litter. I can't wait to see them start growing. Yes, oh, it's not. It won't be long, Ricardo. Seriously, like with the once a week live stream, you're going to see some like marked changes. Like it'll be next week and you'd be like, how the heck did they get so big already? Mm -hmm. get, they, they, this breed grows really fast. So... Deborah said, love those wild children. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right. There's got to be a spicy one in there. Michelle asked, for how long does the mom want to stay with them 24 7? Mm -hmm. At what age does the mom <laughs> want to leave them? Uh, I mean, Mabel does like to leave, but she also scratches at the door to come back in. Like, she wants to mother on her terms. Um, yes. And I think some of it is because it's warm outside and it's just like disorienting for them to be in the garage and everything. But 
they're all about two and a half. Mays are about to be three weeks. Um, and the moms still want to be in here. They haven't abandoned them yet. <laughs> yes. um, so usually around four weeks is when we see the moms just pretty much be like, you can nurse sometimes and then you need to be away from me. Yes. And then it gets to the point. It's, it seems like it gets uh, like there's a turning point once the puppies are big enough that yeah. like they can nurse even yes. while mom is standing yes. up. Yes. And then that starts, <laughs> I mean, they put them in their place. We watch them, of course, all the time, but we let them tell them no, because I don't know if you've ever nursed a child, but sometimes you got to give them tough love. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Mary said, back in the 80s, I bred, how, I'm not sure how you pronounce that breed. What? Is it Kisans? I don't know how to pronounce that one. In Persians, it's hard work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Breeding is, is definitely it, I feel it's like difficult. those are probably smaller, so that's even harder. Melissa's going to look up the breed in her She's breed a book. Dog in Cyclopedia. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. Let's, let's show it. Look. You got to show it to the camera. Bring it over here. Dad is holding it like a baby. She oh. found it right away. Like She's got a whole dog breed guide. <laughs> it's so cute. So look, Asian. light pink fell asleep on me. She just wanted some loving. That's all. Oh, uh, Owen, you saying what's up? They saying hi? He said, I don't know. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Hey, real quick again, if you've not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thank goodness uh, we hit 3,000 subscribers or he would have been asking 100, 100 times again. <laughs> that we hit 3,000 this, this week. Tell so the truth. When we hit 3,000, we got an email and you're like, oh, cool. Uh, I was happy. <laughs> we celebrated. No, we, we love, you know, just the, the kind of the community we're building through this. And, um, you know, we're trying to do a better job of connecting with you guys through the live chat. So thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, if you got any more questions, drop them uh, in the in the chat right now. We'll probably stay on for just a few more minutes, and then uh, you know after that we'll see you guys again next week. Maybe this week we'll we'll actually like try to make another YouTube video, like a normal YouTube video. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's pretty busy, pretty busy around here. Uh, I'm getting the like puppy shakes too. It's. Uh, you see that light pink is like so asleep right now that she's like shaking in her sleep. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's uh let's like zoom in. Well, hey, hold on. We got one more. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, look at Millie, Millie's puppy rolling over, doing the puppy stretch. Waking brothers up. Yes, of course. Maple's puppies in there sleeping. We're about to change out the puppy pads right after the live stream. They're they're due to be changed out. And May's puppies sound asleep again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and May's like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> awesome. If you have any last minute questions, drop them down in the comments. We'd be glad to hop out. What what's there's is there anything else that we left off? about how to care for newborn puppies mm -hmm. i mean we you know we check their weight daily right like you guys mm -hmm. yeah we're keeping track of their weight daily we, we just want to make sure that they're gaining not losing and yeah making sure that they've got you know the right temperature uh in their space i actually have one of those like temperature guns super fun really that is. like you know point Dot, Even if you know, you're not having infrared. a lighter, you should probably just buy one. Just oh, they are fun. Like fun. <laughs> well, it's got like a laser pointer too. So like the other dogs like chase the laser while you're, you know, pointing it around. It's fun. All right. We got a couple more questions. Michelle said, mm -hmm. how do you keep the puppies cool in the summer? Air conditioner. And then last year, for whatever reason, Texas decided this year that it was going to be 100 the first week of May. And it hasn't stopped. Last summer wasn't like this. So we did we got away with just fans, but this year we did get an air conditioner. And then we also do like the towels. We have like old beach towels that like our family generously donates to us like every year. Um, and we wet those and then put them down and the puppies try 
as they get older to regulate their temperature. So if they're feeling hot and panting, they will actually kind of, we found that they would crawl and find the cool towel. And so then and last year, on. in addition to changing out all the blankets, we were changing out towels like every day. But should it get hotter in here for some reason this year, we would do the same thing. Yep. But uh, we put like, I don't know if you can see in the, the window kind of behind me, uh, we got like a really nice like window unit to put out here in the garage and it's, it's doing pretty good. Um, we probably need to insulate the yeah, garage. Yeah, it was 105 the other day and it was struggling, but yeah, everyone was struggling. Yes, it was very <laughs> hot outside and humid. So, all right, let's see. Uh, Deborah said, let me tell you, a king size bed is not big enough for hubby and I and Ruger. I bet. I bet. Hey, one of our ideas that we want to do, uh, uh, you know, coming up, up, upcoming live streams, um, I'm I'm reaching out to a few other uh, like content creators on on YouTube that also have great Pyrenees uh, to kind of bring them on and do some interviews. So that would be really cool. We're trying to line that up now. And we're also uh, going to line up some interviews with um, people that have bought a puppy mm -hmm. from us in the past and have we want to like line up one of somebody that has their dog as like an inside family dog and for them to be able to give you their experience. You know, because we get questions all the time, like, hey, can they be like an inside dog? Uh, I mean, we can tell you, yeah, but not from our experience mm -hmm. because we have ours as working dogs. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have success stories. And at first I was like, oh, we could get like some testimonials and read those, you know, on our live stream. But with this platform, the stream yard, we can literally bring on somebody and interview them. So I would love to do that. And just so you guys can hear from somebody that's actually living it and probably show you their great Pyrenees right there on their couch with them um and let you know like how often they have to vacuum <laughs> so uh we're planning on doing that soon let's see trace said thank you for y'all's time looking forward to more thank you so much thanks for for tuning in lenny asked are you going to keep or get a puppy or dog from a, a different breeder in the future so they're not related to your dogs if you continue breeding in the future yeah yeah we do have plans for that in the future um you know we we're kind of going to sit down and figure out what our breeding program looks like uh, moving forward into the future because we are planning on, you know, retiring. Like we're we're not going to breed overbreed our girls. So, um, yeah, there's going to be time for or transitions Mac, or, and, Mac. or yeah. even Mac. Yeah, Mac so. is a great dog, but um, he'll have to be replaced at, at some, some point. point. Yep, yep. He's awesome. We should bring him in the garage sometime. No, oh, that'd be no. crazy. We have during his favorite holiday remember? oh and that's actually coming up <laughs> that's gonna be fun. oh mac hates <laughs> fireworks like big time he gets so scared of fireworks and uh fourth of july is coming up so we usually have to bring him in the into the garage and to try to like calm him down he gets like super anxious like so anxious that we even like we we paid for we did vet our vet prescribed prescription like it's like this like tranquilizer, tranquilizer like, like gel that you like put into their like their mouth and their gums like you don't it's not a shot it's like a gel that it did not work, it did not work. <laughs> like i don't know if he's just like so big or whatever but like he fought it like he kind of acted like he was drunk but he was still like extremely he was anxious he was like a very anxious drunk which wasn't yeah. a good combination no so we're <laughs> we're just gonna like we just now we know for like new year's eve and for uh fourth of july and we just Texas independence day Yes. Yeah. Texas Independence Day is actually a big deal here, too. So uh, if you ever wonder what we do here at Willow Ridge Acres for Fourth of July or for New Year's Eve, uh, we ring in the New Year's mm -hmm. out with the with animals. the with the animals because they get a little anxious. I spent and... every New Year's Eve for the last four, three, four years alone inside. Because me and Melissa are out with the dogs, making sure they're not trying to, like, claw through the fence. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> thing you like being under the stars so much. I do. I do. All right, let's see. Mary said, I thoroughly enjoyed this and looking forward to more. Awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate the love and support. And uh, with that, I guess we'll sign off for, uh, for today. And uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Stay tuned for more. Thanks. Bye.